Hey everyone, this is Thomas from Tom's Garage. And today I've got a special treat for you. Um, I did an overnight test drive experience with a Tesla Model X. It's the P100D model with ludicrous mode. And it is crazy, to say the least. Um, so I've driven a Tesla before. Uh, it was one of the older Model S's, did not drive any of the, the redesign Model S's or the Model X's. And I have to say I'm a... Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, the acceleration is amazing. Um, the fit and finish is, is really good. Um, this specific car stickers at $170,000. Um, I don't think the build is quite up to, let's say, like $170,000 Mercedes or, or any other car like that, but it is very good. Um, I do like it. It's very, very simple, um, understated, modern looking. Um, so I'm going to do, go ahead and do kind of like a complete overview, a quick overview of some of the key features that, that I've liked playing around with it um, and things I didn't like. All right, so let's start with the interior. Um, so first thing I noticed when I got into the car is the steering wheel is very nice. It has a slight flat bottom. Um, you can almost miss it if you weren't looking for it. Um, very thick, very nice grip to it. Um, it's got some metal accents on it. Uh, it's not plastic. And for the parts where there, where there is plastic, it's it's soft touch plastic. So we've got leather, metal, uh, soft touch plastic. And this, this feels like leather as well on the airbag. Um, so you've got your volume controls. Go forward and back for songs. Um, voice recognition, did not use that. And then this dial right here is to adjust the, um, the dash. So by default, if you go up and down, it's going to adjust the temperature. Um, if you switch to a different mode, you can adjust, let's say, fan speed, display brightness, recent calls, contacts. So those are the options that are on there. Um, I wish there was a way to like kind of cycle through, let's say, some like power displays, but I don't see that. Uh, but that's fine. Let me just go ahead and turn down the fan speed. So everything goes to like 11. So fan speed goes to 11. Um, audio volume goes to 11 as well, so I thought that was interesting. Uh, left side, uh, you've got your uh, windshield wiper, turn controls. Um, the headlights are on automatically by default. I believe the windshield wipers turn on as well. Um, same thing with high beams, but you can manually trigger those. Nothing too crazy there. And then below, this is the um, autopilot cruise control uh, mechanism. So if you want to go ahead and enable autopilot, all you do is you pull it twice towards you. It turns on autopilot. I'll get a quick video of that later. Um, and it turns on auto steer. Really neat. And if you want to adjust the following distance, you turn that guy. So you can either go, you know, one is the closest, seven is the farthest. One is still not even that close. I see people tailgate closer than that all the time, but I was doing around five. Uh, really neat. Um, so the only thing with, with autopilot is it will occasionally turn off if it gets confused. So you do need to be ready to take over um, at all times. And what they actually do is if you have your hands off the steering wheel for, I think it's like a two minutes or three minutes or something, the outside of the display will flash white and it'll say, put your hands on the steering wheel. Um, and then if you wait long enough, it'll actually start beeping at you um, and then if you keep on doing it, it'll actually disable autopilot for the rest of the drive kind of as a punishment. So all you need to do is you need to just kind of hold your hands lightly on the steering wheel. Um, I believe the sensors are in this position. Uh, I was having trouble seeing or determining where it is, but when I gripped the steering wheel um, at the 10 and two position, that's when it turned off that display. Um, before I go, oh yeah, on the right side, this is just the, the stock for the transmission, so there's no there's no knob or um, oh, I just beat that because it's I'm charging right now at one of the charging stations to get some extra juice. Um, this is how you go ahead and get into transmission. So down, put it in drive, up, reverse, and when you're ready to park, you just press this button. And very intuitive. Um, something that's interesting is in this car before I get into the main head unit is this massive windshield. It is gigantic. Uh, it's it's hard to tell how big it is until you're actually in the car. It's about, you know, a normal car windshield is gonna go 
maybe a little bit higher than where the rear view mirror is. This thing goes all the way up, basically directly up above your head. So my head is right under this uh, junction right here. Um, very neat, very immersive. Uh, my wife was saying that it felt like she was in a, in a spaceship, and I agree. Um, this is definitely one of the major selling points. I'm, a, I'm a, looking at the S probably instead of the X, but this windshield is a game changer. It's much better than a sunroof, and I'm a big fan of just having a lot of open um, air or open light in the car. Um, so because this windshield is designed like this, um, as you notice, there's no traditional uh, sun visor, right? So what's going to happen when you're in the sun? So we have the sun visor here, and it clips out from the side. Um, so all you do is you, you bring that out, and then it clips into here, into the left side of the mirror, the home link option. So it locks in there, and then you have this like little sun visor, and if you need a little more sun blocking, um, you go ahead and you, you, pull a, you pull a tab, then it opens up, oh, and there's a little vanity mirror. Um, but it's not bad, it did the job. Um, when I was driving in the evening yesterday as the sun was setting and, and this morning, I was able to block the light and uh, it does get out of the way when you don't need it. So that is, that is nice, if it is a little strange. Um, taking a look at the head unit. This thing is huge, it's 17 inches. It's basically a, you know, a giant laptop screen in the middle of your car, love it. Right now you can see we're in the P100D with ludicrous mode. You can actually simulate the performance mode of different models of the different cars. If you want to see how a 75D feels like or, or, a, or a 100D, if you're comparing, you can go ahead and see that. Um, honestly, for day-to-day -day driving, the 75D is more than enough. It's still very fast. And the only you know difference is the, the kind of like the raw acceleration when you, when you floor it. Um, but I feel like, unless like you're a real speed demon and you like to race people a lot, you're maybe only gonna floor it 100%, you know, once in a while to show it off to your friends. And other than that, you just drive it like a normal car because this this is a car that you can you can cruise in. It's very very comfortable. So let's take a look at some of these other options that we have here. So um, we've got sound, navigation, calendar, performance, browser, camera. And phone. Uh, so for the music here, there is a radio mode. So you can it has a nice interface for looking at the radio. It has HD radio. There's streaming. So with streaming, um, they have Slack. It looks like um, I didn't really use that. I just streamed from my phone. They have TuneIn. Uh, TuneIn is for podcasts, so you can go ahead and play podcasts. So this car has LTE built in. You can see there. So we're able to get that over the web. And then phone, phone that's just playing from your phone as well. So you can connect to your phone via Bluetooth. Um, I've noticed that sometimes it wouldn't connect. I don't know if it was my phone. I've had some issues after I upgraded to iOS 11, um, but it does work nicely. Uh, so what happened is I just hit, I just hit phone and then it disconnected. But yes, yeah, so you go ahead and, and um, be your interface. The only thing is I'm used to Apple CarPlay and I use Spotify. I'm a huge Spotify fan. Um, so I'm really used to that interface. And it's a bit disappointing that um, you can't navigate through that. I hope they do add Apple CarPlay in the future. I feel like that'd be a huge boost, but maybe that's just because I'm used to it. Um, yes, so that's the music section. Um, you can do full screen or you can have it uh, half screen as well by hitting this button here. So full screen, half screen, I'll leave it full screen. Um, navigation, so this is powered by Google Maps. It's very nice. Um, I used it uh, a handful of times and I haven't had any issues with it. Only thing I saw that is when you put it in a destination, it does have traffic built in, but it does not update, it does not give you the, uh, the arrival time with traffic taken into account right away. What it does is it'll update your, your you know, arrival time as you're going. So for example, I wanted to drop off my wife at the dentist today it said we were gonna get there at 8.01, you know, 10 minutes into the ride, now it's saying 8.15, even though Google Maps on your phone, you know, says that it would have taken, you know, uh, you would have arrived at 8.15 from the start. Um, it's one thing that I could see them improving. Um, so all you, when you wanna go and search something, all you do is you press uh, navigate, 
put in your address. It's powered by Google Maps. This is very, very friendly. Um, you've got some other options here. If you want to see um, like a satellite view, you can do that. Didn't really do that. Um, you can go ahead and turn on traffic or turn off traffic. So that's nice, powered by Google. And then over here is if you want to go ahead and find a, a charging station, you hit that. And then this will show you, um, you know, the charging stations that are around you. And then what you can do is you can tap on them and then it'll tell you, well, that's not a charging station. So it'll tell you actually what, you know, what types of charging stations are available there. Very nice. Or what the power is. Is that what you can, what you can expect? So right now I'm at the uh, 13 kilowatt charging station. Um, as you can see here, um, it's 72 amps, uh, 210 volts. So it gives you, it kind of fluctuates depending on the power quality. Uh, but I've been getting around 35, 40 miles an hour of charging. Um, that's about the fastest that you'll get unless you go to a supercharger. Um, I think I've seen some stations, they have 16 kilowatt chargers and they'll get you up to 50 miles an hour. But a, a supercharger uh, will be 170 miles in half an hour. Um, so about 300, you know, 350 an hour. Um, very nice. So I hope they build out more of those. Uh, so let's go ahead and see some of these other options. Uh, so if you want to pull down the menu, you just tap on the top. Uh, so we've got calendar view. Uh, so if you, have, if you have the Tesla mobile app, um, it'll actually sync with your calendar. You get your invites or your calendar events on here. So it can automatically put that into the navigation. And once they enable full autonomous driving, it'll actually, you'll be able to just get in the car and it'll take you to your destination uh, for you without having to plug anything in. Trip. Uh, this guy right here tells us stats about um, how you've been uh, driving. Um, so when you go ahead and you put in a, oh, that, that rotates the screens. So when you go ahead and put in a trip, it'll tell you um, what your charge was at the beginning of the trip and what your charge is at the end of the trip. Uh, so that gray line right there is the estimated charge. So as you can, and then the, the one on the top is the one that you actually did. So as you can see, um, I actually ended up using less charge than they estimated mainly because when I when I go to work, um, we're going downhill. We live um, out in the hill country. Uh, so going back is mainly downhill. Uh, consumption, you can view stats, you know, for the consumption for the last, you know, five miles, 15 miles, 30 miles. Um, so this is, you know, the, um, the test drive car. So you can tell when it's being driven by customers versus when it's being driven by employees. So I thought that was funny. Um, because this is the one with, uh, you know, ludicrous mode, P100D, um, these motors can pull a lot of juice. And that's what you can see there. That's when you're like maxing out the performance. Um, yes. So very neat. And then it also tell you what your projected range is. So right now, if we were to, uh, drive with how we've been doing over the last 30 miles, uh, it's expected we'll have 56 miles of range. If we drive, you know, as we did over the last 15 miles, um, it says 58 miles of range. So you can do average range, instant range, because uh, it's gonna fluctuate greatly. So if you're flooring the car all the time, um, even though the dash might say, for example, you have 67 miles, you're gonna run out of juice in you know 30 or less. Um, so it can change greatly. It can also change depending on the temperature outside as well. So the colder it is, the less efficient the batteries are, the less juice you're gonna, you're, the less mileage you're gonna get out of them. Uh, finishing up this, we've got the um, web browser. So you have a full web browser here. We were looking at Halloween costumes earlier. It only works, I think, when you're parked. Um, so they did that for safety. Uh, but it's kind of neat, you know, if you're parked somewhere, uh, let's say at a supercharger or a charging station, like I am right now, you can go ahead and browse the web. Um, I don't know if it plays videos, but um, pretty neat that they included that. Camera. Uh, it shows you the rear view of the camera. Um, I haven't seen a way for it to show the front camera or the side cameras. If you guys know if there's a way to do that, let me know in the comments. Um, but I know there's eight cameras in the car. The owner advisor told me that two of the cameras are used in autopilot, but I only see the rear camera here. Um, I've been in like the, the new F-150 Raptor, uh, the 2017. 
and they have a really neat 360 view as well as the Nissan Leaf. I think a lot of cars are starting to do this a 360 view where you can see the front camera, the back camera, and the sides. Um, but I don't see that in here, so that was a little disappointing. I thought you'd be able to see, you know, all the different cameras, eight cameras, but maybe they'll add that in a future update. And then phone right there. Um, I'm not going to display the phone numbers. Um, let's see here. Uh, but what you can do is you can see like recent calls, contacts, dialer. Um, so that syncs with your phone at when you hook it up with Bluetooth. Nice. All right. Going on, um, so if you click on that guy right there, you can save your driver profile settings. So this will save like all of the settings that you did as well as your seat positions, a lot of seat positions there. Home, uh, this has home link built in, so you can go ahead and sync with any automated gates or garages. If you hit that charge, that shows your charging status. So right now, if we wanted to get a full charge, it would take about five hours um, at the current charging rate. So right now we're getting 36 miles per hour at 72 amps, 210 volts. And so far from our charging session, we've gained 12 miles of range. Uh, so what you can actually do is you can do scheduled charging. Uh, so this is really useful if you have a house in an area that allows you to take advantage of uh, time of use electricity charging. So some places they charge you, you know, a flat rate for all of the electricity that you use. Other places will actually give you a discount um, if you charge at non-peak use hours. So peak use hours are gonna be when everyone else is using electricity. Typically it's going to be in the afternoon when it starts warming up, when everyone gets home, turns on the, all their gadgets and electricity and the AC and so on. Uh, so if you actually charge, let's say like in the middle of the night or early in the morning, the electricity can be, you know, I've seen as low as like a third of the normal price or even a, a quarter of the price. Um, so very useful there. So you can go ahead and schedule that, schedule charging. And that's why you would, this is why you would, you would go ahead and use that. <clears throat> um, charge current is, so right now it's using the maximum charge current. You can go ahead and use less. I'm not really sure why you would use that. From what I've seen, um, charging, you know, typically if you charge at a higher rate, it's going to degrade the battery. It's going to reduce your range. Um, but I have seen other Teslas. There's one, um, there's a Tesla shuttle service in California. They put on 300,000 miles on the Tesla in two years, and the battery only degraded, I think, 6%. And they were using superchargers all the time, which is much faster than this, higher current. Um, so I don't really know why you would use less charging current, but you do have the option to do there. Uh, paid supercharging. So the new Teslas don't automatically come with free supercharging. Um, this one looks like it might not have it. So in order to get free supercharging, now you have to use a referral code when you buy your Tesla, or you have to have bought, you know, one of the older Teslas. I believe it was the 2015 and earlier. Those all came with free supercharging. Um, but if you don't have free supercharging, you can still use the superchargers. They just charge you by the minute. Uh, it's still cheaper than gas. Not sure what the rate is because um, I stopped by one of the charging stations and in, in, uh, supercharging stations in, in North Austin, but it looks like it had just been built and they did not finish turning it on yet. Uh, so when I tried plugging in, it didn't work, so I didn't see what the rate was, but I've heard it's not bad. Yep. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and look at all the options uh, for the controls. So we have quite a bit. So looking at the bottom, we have your heated seats. So I've got my heated seats on high. Um, it's pretty warm, not as hot as I've seen in other cars, but still comfortable. My, my wife was feeling cold last night. Um, she had it on max and she said it, it didn't feel very strong. The ones in her, um, in her Genesis Coupe are, are stronger. Um, you have dual zone climate control. So you can control on both sides or you can sync them together. Uh, heated windshield, heated rear windshield. There's your volume control. Um, and custom, this is cool right here. So this is where you can you know, turn on AC on or off um, and you can set the circulation mode. Uh, so you can either bring in fresh air, recirculate, or you can put it in biohazard mode. So biohazard mode, um, the way that they've marketed it is, is it's a, a very fine filter um, and it's supposed to be so good that you can actually drive through like a biological warfare zone and you would not get any of the contaminants into the car. Um, just don't open the door, right? 
Uh, so nice. It's supposed to do. It's supposed to be very good if you live in a place that has a lot of pollution on the highways. Let's say L.A. Um, I've read studies where um, you know the pollution inside your car in the cities is usually a lot worse than it is outside of your car. Let's say if you're biking. Um, so I would definitely be using that all the time if I you know commuted on a, a on very congested highways. Uh, let's sort through the controls. Uh, so we've got two options, controls and settings. Very intuitive. So I, would, I will say that this navigation system is one of the most intuitive ones that I've had. It, it feels like I'm using an iPad app. That's how intuitive it is. Uh, so you've got your doors right here. So this is if you wanted to open the goal wings. Go ahead and do that. You can open the driver door, the passenger door, front trunk, the rear trunk. Um, so you can see that it opened there. Very nice. Um, you also see that on, on this guy here. So for example, I'll close the driver door, driver goal wing. We're going to see that closing. I guess it doesn't close on there, but it closes on there. Um, close the passenger door. And then we'll close the goal wing. So this is very nice. I'm going to do a, a zoom in when we're outside of the operation. Ace is a, a little terrified of these doors. He's never been in a car that has these kind of doors, understandably. Um, below, these are just for your lights. If you want to turn on, you know, left left side light, right side light, ambient light, dome lights. Um, the ambient lights are really cool. It's actually a strip of light that's that's under the um, the armrests as well as by the cup holders. Um, headlights typically you just have them on automatically, automatically turn on automated headlights rest of the set of controls that we have here um, so we've got suspension so this car has the air ride suspension so it's actually got you know all the options um, so you can adjust the ride height um, right now I don't have the brake pressed but it, usually it's in low mode that gives you I guess the best handling as well as the best fuel economy if you're, you know, off-road or, I mean, you wouldn't really take this off-road, but if you needed some extra ride height, let's say if you're going over like a really high speed bump, or if you're going up a really steep curve, um, a really steep driveway, you can go ahead and raise it up higher. Um, automatic lowering is set, so it automatically lowers it when you get to higher speeds in the highways. Um, I've driven a Ram Rebel with air suspension, and it does the same thing as well. When you go above 65 miles per hour, it lowers it an inch. That's supposed to help with the fuel economy driving you've got some options for steering modes com comfort standard sport i mainly use sport um, acceleration so there's sport and ludicrous um, ludicrous mode unlocks the full potential of the motor unit as well as the discharge rate of the batteries there's this max battery power mode so if you enable this this is going to give you the highest acceleration possible so what it needs to do uh, it needs to warm up the batteries because that's going to allow it to discharge at the highest rate. So if we enable max battery power, so now it's turned on, it's going to heat the batteries. Um, so this can take some time. Right now it's a little cooler this morning, so it's saying 30 minutes. When I was driving around yesterday and I turned it on, it said estimated time 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna turn it off right now just for the extra noise. Uh, I haven't tried that yet. I definitely wanna do that. But that unlocks the full advertised zero to 60 time for this car. Creep, you can turn on turn on or off creep. Um, if you have it on, it's like a normal car where you let go of the gas and it pulls forward a little bit. I usually leave that on. Regen brakes, if you have it on standard mode, it's actually pretty aggressive. Um, it'll actually bring the car to almost a complete stop and it allows you to do one pedal driving in most cases. Um, so you can go ahead and accelerate, you let go of the gas, um, and you're ready to go. Uh, it slows down the car. It gives you a little bit of juice back, not a lot. Uh, range mode, if we enable that, range mode, uh, it saves energy by reducing climate control power. It also distributes torque between the motors to improve range. Um, I had that on yesterday because we picked up the car with 90 miles of range. It was a last minute request to pick it up. Wanted to surprise my wife for her birthday. Um, so I had it on range mode when we were getting, when we were driving back home after going to dinner downtown. But we can go ahead and turn that off now. Uh, cold weather mode. 
This allows you to adjust the heated seats on all of the seats here. So if you want to turn on heated seats, for example, adjust the rear middle seat, you can go ahead and do that. This is the five passenger model. It does not have the third row seats. Um, in this car, you have three different seating configurations. One, five passenger mode. Two is seven passenger mode where they add a row of two seats in the back. And they also have a six passenger mode where it has the two seats in the back, but then for the middle row, instead of having you know the traditional uh, bench seat, right, that you see here, where this is the three seats, instead it gives you two captain chairs, almost like a minivan, and then you have the option of getting a console in the middle or leaving it open. And if you leave it open, it makes it easier to get into the back of the car. I kind of like that option. I think that's the one I would get with the X. Trips, that's to view your trip information, view your odometer, since it, it doesn't display it on the dash. Display, you can control the brightness. I usually leave it, leave it on auto. I didn't see any reason to change that. E-brake, power off. Um, so if you need to you know, turn off the e-brake for some reason, you can go ahead and do that um, through here. But when you press the brake in this car, it'll actually automatically you know, disable the e-brake. And when you put it in drive, you're, you're ready to go. Um, so speaking of that, actually, what's nice in this car is let's say if you have the driver door open, It'll actually open the door automatically when you walk up to the car. And then if you want to close the door, you know, because you're in a Tesla, you don't actually have to, you know, touch the door. That's too dirty, right? You just press the brake and it automatically closes the door for you. That is really cool. All right, let's finish off the settings. Um, so we've got some app settings. Right now it's got two apps, maps and navigation calendar. I'm sure they'll be adding more in the future driving profiles. You can add as many profiles as you would like. This saves all of your uh, driving positions and your settings. So you can see see what's saved. Um, so they save you know, all of your driving settings, climate control, locks and lights, units and formats, maps and nav settings. Nice. Um, like for example, for me on maps, I like north up. My wife likes the rotating thing that confuses the, 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 the heck out of me. So um, that would be saved between the two. You can change, you know, your different units and formats. Um, I like 24 hour time. Vehicle, uh, just some automated settings, mirror, auto tilt. That's when you reverse, it tilts down the side mirrors. Mirror auto fold. If you put it in park mode, it'll automatically fold the mirrors in for you. Um, headlights after exit, you can leave the headlights on after you leave the car, like the daytime running lights, adaptive lights, uh, smart preconditioning. What this will actually do is it'll um, it'll, the car will learn your schedule and it'll actually cool down the car before you get into it. So you don't have to get into a hot car anymore. It, it goes ahead and prepares the car for you. There's cabin overheat protection. So if you're in a hot climate, it says that it'll actually prevent the cabin from re reaching extremely high temperatures for a period of up to 12 hours after you exit the car. So the temperature is not going to exceed 105 degrees. Um, I could see that being you know, a, a good safety feature. Um, you know, every time in the summer we hear about either people leaving their, their children in the car or their dogs in the car and they forget. And then unfortunately they wait too long, it gets too hot in the car and they, and they, and they pass away. Um, so with that cabin overheat protection, I mean, it could still get to hundred degrees, but hopefully that might save some lives there. Doors and lock, you can set the door unlock mode. Right now, if you unlock the doors, it unlocks all the doors. Walk away door control, unlock on park, close all with key fob. So if you triple click on the key fob, it's gonna close all the doors. So if you have the driver, passenger, gull wing doors, and the trunk, it'll close all of them. Automatic doors is nice. What it'll do, um, the driver door is gonna open when the key fob's detected, or if you double click on it, and then if you do another double click, it's gonna open the passenger door. Falcon wing door height, we'll look at that. It has sensors, so it'll automatically stop itself before it hits like a garage or something like that. Passive entry, that is on as well. Uh, safety and security, so there's automatic chimes for parking assist. You have an alarm that's automatically enabled. There's mobile access. Um, not sure why you would turn it off. Um, if you're maybe uh, doing something sketchy you don't want your wife to see or your husband to see i guess you can disable it so they can't track your car we looked at the display settings um home link uh so what you can do is you can add as many home link sensors as you would like so typically it's garage doors gates 
so you don't have to have the clicker. You can go ahead and do that there. Uh, driver assistance. Um, so we have auto steer turned on. Um, so when you have, this is for an autopilot setting, so there's auto steer and auto lane change. So if you have auto steer on, it has radar based cruise control. It'll keep the same safe distance. And then with uh, auto steer, there's cameras on the mirrors pointing down. It tracks the lane positions and it'll actually steer to keep your car in there. So it'll actually, it did a very good job. I, I live on some twisty roads and it stayed itself perfectly centered in the lane um, without any interaction. I just had to hold on to the steering wheel. Auto lane change. If you have autopilot turned on and you turn on your turn signal, it'll actually make a turn, uh, a lane change for you when it's safe. Very cool, a little unnerving the first time you do it, um, but great feature. Auto park, um, so there's a summon feature. So summon is nice, because uh, what you can actually do is you can park yourself you can actually have the car park itself in a garage. Let's say if you have a very tight garage, for example, um, in my parents' house, they have a, a two car bay and a one car bay. Uh, so in the one car bay, the, there's not a lot of space between the doors, as you see here, maybe like something like that. It's very tight. So what you can actually do is you just park your car in front of the garage door, get out of the car, and it'll park itself into the garage. Very cool. And then when you wanna get back into the car, you can go ahead, hit um, hit a specific button press on the remote. We've got the Tesla remote here. We'll look at that too. And then it'll actually pull itself out of the car, open the door for you, and you can go ahead and get in, be on your way. You don't have to worry about parking anymore. Um, it also has the ability to park itself automatically in parking spots. I only got that to trigger randomly at, at points. I think they're gonna be adding more features for that. Lane assist. Um, so this will actually help keep you in your lane so you actually feel a slight vibration um, in the steering wheel if you cross the lane without the turn signals so if you have a habit of making lane changes without signaling you're going to want to turn that off otherwise your steering wheel is going to be vibrating all the time speed assist um, you can have this this car will actually display the speed limit on the roads that you're on and this will either give you uh, you know a warning as a display or as a chime if you exceed the speed limit. So you can either, you know, have that uh, alert happen automatically, you know, when you pass the speed limit, if it's 30 miles per hour speed limit, you go 31, it'll beep at you, or you can set a relative offset. This is very nice. So if you perhaps have a habit of going, you know, five or four miles per hour over the limit, um, you can set that chime to only trigger when you go five miles over the limit. Collision avoidance assist. So there's a front collision warning sensor and you can trigger when it's going to um, when it's going to go off, either a late, medium, or early warning. And there's also automatic emergency braking enabled in the car. Um, so if you are about to rear end someone, it'll actually stop the car for you. I didn't get a chance to test it, but I've heard that it is pretty good. Um, service mode. This is just the service and reset section. So there's like a towing mode, um, so that way you can tow the car without damaging it. Uh, a service mode for the wipers. Um, I'm assuming that's so you can you know change the wipers, and then there's a factory reset. So that's a that's the overview of all the options. So there's a lot there, but as you've seen, you know it's very intuitive. Um, I've been in some cars like Audis and BMWs where there's so many options, you know, in five or six different menus, and this is all in one place. There's either controls or settings. Um, I was actually expecting more settings there but it's very cool and they do do the updates over the air automatically um, so as new features are rolled out as additional autopilot settings are added those are automatically brought into the car all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the outside of the car and we'll get a look at uh, some of the exterior features well, one thing i forgot to show is the uh, window switch controls so they are automatic up and down for all four windows um, and then you have your controller for the mirrors as well. And before we actually look at the outside, let's take a look at like the cup holders. So you have like this cup holder section and it kind of automatically closes there. But then if you push forward, um, you can push it forward all the way. You can see there's two adjustable cup holders. Nice, very spacious, a lot of room in here. There's no traditional console, you know, that you know, you'd see that, that folds up in a car. Instead you just have like these cubbies. There's a little section under here. There is a charging. Uh, adapter so you can go ahead and put in your iPhone. I was using that it seemed to charge pretty well I think it's a 2 amp connector. You can either open or close this section 
so because there is no adjustable armrest or folding armrest, instead you have this armrest here, and then if you pull back, it exposes two additional cup holders. Cool feature, so for example, you can have one armrest, you can have the full armrest, and still use the cup holder on the right side. Nice. On the doors, you have a little cubby here. Um, it's all soft touch materials, so this is, this feels like leather over here. In the inside, there's like Alcantara leather. Uh, we've got like this wood here, metal, leather again. The dash, this is all leather on the top. We've got additional wood, stainless steel, white leather. White leather is nice, um, looks nice, although I don't know how it would hold up to, let's say, a bunch of kids and a dog. So I have I have Ace with me right now. Um, did, he didn't really get them dirty or anything, so I guess it did good. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the outside. So we've got the door. If you want to open the door or close the door, um, you can close it. If you want to open it, uh, instead of pressing here, like you would think, you actually press there. Opens the door. So unlike the Model S that has the, the, the door handles, these are stationary. So I think it's a good thing because I've read that people have had issues with those uh, with those fold-out do uh, door handles. Uh, we can see the cameras. So you have a camera right here. Um, there's a camera in the B pillar as well. So a lot of cameras. There's eight cameras in total. Um, we've got some very nice looking 22 inch wheels with the red calipers so that's how you can tell it's you know a, a, the p model um, if you want to open the gull wings we just tap on the gull wing section opens the gull wing there very cool um this is very useful let's say if you're putting kids in your car seat because i'm standing here i'm six one uh plenty of room overhead so you can easily strap your kid into the car seat and it actually protects you from the rain let's say if there's you know it's raining at the time that you're trying to put your kids in there pretty big rear seats um they're comfortable i had the seat you know pretty far back i've got plenty of leg room not a problem there um you've got two usb ports in the back two cup holders you can actually pop this in or out air vents in the back this is why there's no center console um the seats fold down as well um, they do recline that's nice too um, so you could recline, uh, recline the seats back. Um, you've got vents on the left side too. So four vents in total for the rear seats. And this button right here is to adjust and open the, um, the gullwing doors. What you can actually do is if you're in a tight parking garage, it'll actually stop opening the doors early, but then you can get out of the, you can get out of the car and keep on pressing this button and the advisor told me that this will open the doors until like they just barely touch the um the roof let's go ahead and take a look at the rear so to open the rear you just double tap this rear section this opens the rear of the car very large trunk um i had the charger here so i did a trickle charge overnight um, on 110 volt in my garage um, they give you all the adapters for that and um, it was funny though seeing the the range estimate for plugging in at home so if you plug in just a regular you know 110 volt uh, socket you know like the one that you normally have in your walls you only get uh, two miles of range per hour of charging uh, hilarious so if that's the only thing that you have um, you know, with a normal overnight of charging, you're only going to get about, you know, 20 miles of range or, you know, 24 miles of range. Um, large trunk here. You can go ahead and pull this up. Uh, a lot of storage space. Get, get a little bag. Uh, this thing is a little difficult to put in place. Um, one second. All right. Yeah, it kind of like pops out there. Um, and then you've got some additional storage in this front section too. It looks like you can just take this out. So if you just wanted to have, you know, a whole ton of extra storage space, you could just leave those out, or you can leave it in to have a flat floor and have two levels of storage. Yep, you got a 12 volt back here. Um, there's some additional vents too. I think it's just on this side. I'm not sure if that's for AC or for another purpose. 
All right, let's close the rear. So as I mentioned, you can, you can tap on the remote three times to close all the doors. So now it's closing all those doors there. Um, so nice rear. The X has the, the spoiler that pops up. Uh, the taillights look good. So very good car, you know, overall. So once again, you know, the P, P100D with ludicrous mode. You know it has ludicrous mode because it has the underline. Uh, now, if you order a P100D, it has to come with ludicrous mode. They added that uh, with the P model. Um, it used to be an option that you can get, so you were able to get like the P100D without Ludicrous. Now it's bundled in there, so it's a pretty big jump going from, um, you know, the the 100D to the P100D. Um, you've got uh, rear fog lights. You can turn those on and off uh, through the car. Um, once again, you know, you've got the big wheels. The mirrors have been folded in because I put it in park mode. Um, very handsome front end. The Model X's, like the Model S's, don't have a grill anymore. They used to have like that fake looking grill. Um, so this one, they, they got rid of that. Looks very clean and sleek in my opinion. Very nice headlights. And here you can see that massive, massive windshield. Um, goes all the way back. They have a slight tint. So I, would, I can't see a problem. I have heard people say that, you know, if you live in a really sunny place like Arizona or Texas, that windshield might need to be tinted or you're gonna get a ton of glare. Let's go ahead and look at the front trunk. Tapped on the front part of the key, where the, where the T is. Open that up. Pretty big front trunk here. Um, very nice. They, I know on the Model S's, before they went to the dual, mo dual motor model, they actually had a bigger front trunk. This one is a little smaller because you have the additional space for um, those dual motors in there, so the front motors. Very big. I think I'd be using this space a lot because you don't have to go all the way to the back of the car, put stuff in there, put groceries in there, things aren't flopping around. And it looks like there is like a little tow hook in here as well. If you do need to get the, the car towed, not sure if that was supposed to be um, latched in there or anything. And over here is the, there's an emergency release. So if you do lock, let's say like a toddler or something, um, if you're a very small person, I could see, I might, uh, I don't think I'd be able to fit in here, but you could possibly fit in there into the trunk, but they did add that release. Ace. Come on. Ace, go in the car. Okay, I, uh, tapping on the windows there. Oh, it froze because it connected to my phone, but yeah, just had Ace pop in there. Close like one side. I wish the, the trunk automatically, front trunk closed. It doesn't do that. You have to kind of manually close it down. Close it there. Not as, um, not as nice as I would think, but that's fine. Uh, you got the nice Model X there. And then I think we've charged up enough. We'll drive around a little bit. So to remove the charger, you have to, you can see it's green, it means it's charging. Um, you can see it's charging here as well. We're at one of the Tesla chargers outside of the hotel. To unplug it, you the car has to be unlocked. If the car is not unlocked, you can't uncharge it. So let's say you're at a, a charging station and there's a whole bunch of cars that are already fully charged. Um, well, you can't actually pull out the cable unless the car is unlocked. Uh, that's to prevent people from either pulling out the charger as a joke or something, or you know, let's say like if, like if you're at a laundromat, you know, people take out your laundry because you're not there, for example. That prevents people from doing that. Um, also, keep, keeps people from stealing your cable if you're using your own uh, cable or your own adapter. So you hold down, it turns blue, and then it turns white, then it unlocks it. So I'll go ahead and uh, put this guy here. That door automatically closes. Saw that. Very cool. All right. And then, once again, I'll show you how you can close it. Tap on the gull wing. Closes the door. Very cool. Let's take a look at that one more time. Yep, tried connecting to my phone again. Uh, so I'll open the passenger door. So to open the passenger door, you, you, you tap on the top on the left side. 
instead of tapping by the door, I was tapping by like the driver window and the gullwing kept on opening. Then I realized you have to tap on the top by the driver's side. And then we'll close the gullwing. We've spent thousands of hours engineering that door. All right, let's go for the ride. Right, Ace. Oh yeah, I was about to close the door instinctively. Nope. Instead, press the brake. Car automatically turns on. Tells you to turn on your steering wheel. A little chilly. Right, Ace? All right. So to get in, car's already turned on. You don't have to turn it. There's no push button. No push button start. The car knows you're you're in the car. There's no engine to turn on. They're electric motors. There's no starter or anything. Um, and if we want to get going, you just pull down. Now we're in drive, and then you just pull off. Uh, if you have the charger uh, plugged into the car, it'll actually beep at you, say, and, and won't let you drive off. It'll tell you that there's um, charging cables so you don't accidentally, uh, you know, drive off and pull the cable out of your very expensive Tesla. So Ace loves this car. He's very comfortable. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we have all of the proper um, settings, right? We wanna we wanna make sure that we're in ludicrous mode. Um, oh, controls, right? You hit controls. You can see the suspension settings. So over here, you know, we can like we can raise the car. I actually feel it raising. It raises the rear, and then it raises the front, or you can go very high. You know, I'm not, I'm not actually sure how tall that is. I wonder if I park, we can, we can see what that looks like, because I am curious. Oh, so you can see it actually did raise it quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is an SUV but it's not a very tall SUV. It doesn't have a lot of ground clearance. So this kind of gives you kind of standard SUV clearance. Um, got a car coming up behind me. So let's do that. So I hit the brake, closes the door. Um, going to drive, let's keep going. Cool, so I'll put it back in low mode. Everyone wants to get low, right? I'm a big fan of low cars, so if it's a um, sporty SUV or, or a truck, I really like air suspension in, in the trucks. Um, so that was one of the things. Let's go to driving mode. So we have Ludacris. So we've got, we got all the right goods turned on. So I'm going to turn around at a, at a place where we can go ahead and, and, uh, and check out some of this auto steer functionality. So let me go ahead and pull, pull a UE. Uh, turning radius on this car, not that great. I have one of my cars is a Jeep Wrangler Unlimited and surprisingly it has a better turning radius than this, but this is a massive car. Um, you would think it's small, but you know, this car as well as the Model X or Model S, they are very large cars. Uh, we know with the Model S, even though it's a sedan, you can actually get a third row seat for it. I mean, it's a rear facing jump seat, but you can fit, you know, three rows of people in there. Um, has a hatchback, big hatchback fan as well. Yep, so we're just driving along. You know, it drives like a, like a normal car. It's very comfortable. The regen braking's nice. I'm not hitting the brake at all. All right. All right, Ace, take a seat, because we're going to accelerate. Um, so we're at zero. Okay. Not sure how fast that was, but that was pretty quick. Uh, that wasn't even with the preconditioned batteries. Um, I'll have to look at the timestamps on the video afterwards to see how fast that was. Um, but I'm impressed. Although I will say I did expect it to be a little faster. Um, I'll be uh, doing a review of the S later. 
So right now I'm gonna put it in autopilot mode, so I pull back twice. Now it's in auto steer mode. So it's locked in. Um, you can see there on the display, um, it tells you where cars are around you. I'm not pushing the brake or anything. It's automatically slowing down. Very cool. You can see the car in front of you. Uh, so not doing anything. And I'm not holding the steering wheel either, so we'll see the warning soon where it tells us to go ahead and, and grab the wheel because you're being a maniac because you're driving without, you know, holding onto the car. So again, not pressing the brake, not pressing the gas. It's going, this will actually drive itself, stop and go traffic on any road. Uh, very, very, very cool. Yep, so we're driving along. Maybe I'll go left. Um, I did a kind of a last last minute change, um, but it'll actually do the lane changes for you. So let me pull this back twice, put it in auto steer mode again. So the car is slowing down in front of us. It's actually slowing down and giving us plenty of time. The car's out of the way. Now it's speeding up. Very cool. Not speeding up. Um, goes to, goes at the speed limit. Um, I'm gonna turn right on here. I'll turn it back on. It doesn't navigate around turns, so you kind of have to turn it back on again. Let's say I'll, I'll turn it on here again. So auto steer temporarily unavailable. So now we're now we're ready to go. It's going. Got a car on my my left you can see it there car ahead of me a little unnerving I will say at times um, I'll do the turn signal no it's not gonna like that I'll just go straight through here so it even navigates or across an intersection where there's no lines pretty cool and now I'll do the turn signal so if you want to do the auto lane change you hit the turn signal it waits until it's safe um, and we'll see when it does it not safe yet for it to do that but yeah there's a ton of traffic around us so I'm gonna leave it on we'll see how long it takes for it to, to do a lane change um, and I haven't touched the steering wheel yet um, since I turned it back on so we'll see when that warning turns on as well video and I'll, I'll play it again when we get going all right guys we're moving again auto steer autopilot is turned on I need to get to the left because I want to pull into work and uh, show this to a buddy um, so I have it turned on let's see what it's going to do I mean this current car is all around me it's it's slowing down it's trying to make a gap the car is trying to see if people will let us pass um, we're starting to get a gap now We'll see what happens. Nope, not there. So it's, it, it's not very aggressive in the lane changes. I, there were a couple times I would have made the change there. Maybe if I turn down the following distance. Go ahead and do that. So now it's closer. Uh, it's fine. lane change yet. Alright guys, so I guess we can't really rely on that when it is when there's a lot of traffic. But when it does work, it's neat. It's it's a nice little preview of when full autonomous driving is coming. And that about covers it for the car. Really cool car. Love it. It's $170,000. This thing is freaking expensive. Um I got the window sticker here. Let's take a look at that. So yeah, I've got the window sticker here. Um, very nice car, but very expensive. So yeah, this is a fully loaded Model X P100D. Has all the charging adapters. $145,000 base. $5,000 for enhanced autopilot. $3,000 for the white interior. Um, ultra white seats included. $1,500 for the pearl white clear coat. Alcantara headliner. Ludicrous speed upgrade. Battery range upgrade. 
dark ash wood, five seat interior, those are all included. So again, with the P100D, they require, they kind of bundle all that in, that's why it's more expensive now. Um, 2500 for the ultra high fidelity sound package, 5500 for 22 inch wheels. Nice wheels, but $5,500, that is a lot of money. Um, we've got um, 4500 uh, for the premium upgrade package, um, smart air suspension, red brake calipers, high amperage charger upgrade included, sub-zero uh, weather package, and this came up to be $169,500. There you go, guys. The most expensive Tesla that you can get. Every option, I think, on this one, except the third row seat. That would bring it up, I, I think, depending on which option you get, it either brings it up by $3,000 or $5,000. So over $170,000 for this car. Thanks, everyone. Let me know if you have any questions. This was a really fun experience. I'm going to be looking at the Model S again. Um, let me know what you think. Make sure if you guys like this video, like, subscribe. I'll be putting out more content just like this one. Thank you. All right, guys, that wraps up the video for today. Uh, so we had the review again of the Tesla Model X P100D with ludicrous mode. This was a really fun experience. I love the car. I'm a big tech guy. Um, let me know if you have any other questions about the Tesla Model X or the other Teslas. Again, I'm going to be looking at the Model S as well. I'll put up a video for that guy. Um, if you also have any suggestions or anything you'd like me to do for the reviews, let me know. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, share these videos. There's going to be plenty more coming. Um, see you guys soon.